Hello, welcome to this lecture on James Rachel's The Morality of Euthanasia. This will be a brief introduction to the essay, and as always, you should make sure that you read that uh, before attempting to answer any questions uh, for the course. James Rachel's uh, main point in this essay is that given that some patients feel pain of such a horrible nature that death is the only way to relieve it. If a person asks for death as a release from extreme pain, then how can it be immoral to help them? How can it be immoral to help someone who is guaranteed to die relatively soon and, will, and is guaranteed to be in extreme pain for the remainder of their short life. As an example or an illustration of this phenomenon, we see a story by a journalist uh, regarding a patient who uh, spent some time next to the journalist. After telling us the story, the journalist asked us to consider what we would do uh, if we had a pet or a dog that was in a similar amount of pain and in a similarly pessimistic diagnosis. And the journalist concludes that no human with a spark of pity could let a living thing suffer so. Indeed, when we deal with animals, uh, pets or otherwise, when we find out that they have um, diseases, ailments, injuries, what have you, that are fatal uh, and that leave the animal in extreme pain, the very common, in fact, the almost universal uh, decision is that the humane thing to do is to put the animal to sleep, to save it from suffering unnecessarily. And it is odd uh, that we don't have, we don't extend to humans the same consideration. It is odd that we think it's humane to keep anal animals from suffering unnecessarily, but that it is acceptable to have humans suffer unnecessarily. Furthermore, while the utilitarian argument, um, which Rachel considers in his essay, is found to be ultimately unsatisfying, it is grounded in a good idea. If an action or social policy would decrease misery in our society, then it seems like it's a very good reason to endorse that policy. Uh, and this is true in all sorts of legislation or political venues. If we have a solution via a policy or action um, that will improve society by decreasing misery, then it seems that it seems fairly obvious, at least at an intuitive level, that we ought to put that policy into place. And it would strike us as perverse for someone, uh, for a politician, for example, to argue that the policy was unnecessary or somehow bad. In fact, euthanasia fulfills the mandate that we ought to enact policies which reduce misery and therefore improve society. Specifically, Rachel suggests uh, a three-part uh, argument or perhaps a test to consider whether or not euthanasia does indeed fulfill this mandate. First, if an action promotes, or we have the principle that if an action promotes the best interest of everyone and violates no, no rights, no other rights, then it is morally acceptable. In other words, if I have an action which improves every, the condition of everyone in society in one way or another, and it does not violate any rights, then it seems uh, fairly obvious that this action is morally acceptable. Second, euthanasia does in fact do this. In at least some cases, euthanasia does in fact promote the best interests of everyone while violating no other rights. And so it seems that at least in those cases, three, uh, euthanasia is morally acceptable. So what sorts of cases are we talking about? Well, here we're talking about cases in which um, the person is diagnosed with a disease or ailment or injury, which is fatal in the near term, so not fatal five or six years from now, fatal, let's say, within the next 
few uh, next several months. It is a furthermore, it is a disease or ailment or injury, which is extremely painful, and the pain cannot be alleviated by modern medical science, or it cannot be done away with by modern medical science. Um, in that condition, and this is going to be a relatively small number of people, but in that condition, um, if we think about the interest of everyone in society, it seems like euthanizing that person, especially if the person chooses or asks for euthanasia, is a good thing. So why is it a good thing? Well, for one, for the person, it saves them from several months of unnecessary pain. Remember, this person cannot be cured, and they will just essentially without euthanizing them we will be condemning them to sitting or laying in a hospital bed in pain essentially for no good reason and this seems to be um, torturous if not at very least problematic so the person benefits from uh, having to avoid suffering unnecessary pain the person's family benefits from both uh, being saved the spectacle the excruciating experience of watching their loved one wither away in pain for several months unnecessarily. It saves them medical costs, which is not uh, a primary interest, but not something that should be ignored given how expensive end-of-life treatment is. It saves the hospital in medical costs. Uh, it makes hospital beds and the attention of nurses and doctors available to patients that are not suffering from lethal diseases or ailments or injuries. And again, we don't, no one in favor of euthanasia suggests that um, the benefits to society or other patients in terms of costs or time of doctors and nurses and resources of the hospital are by themselves a good reason to euthanize a person. But we ought not to ignore benefits that are there and very real. So again, if a person uh, diagnosed with a lethal condition uh, who is going to die in a few months, asks to be euthanized as a way of sparing themselves many, many months of unnecessary pain. Rachel's argues that it would be immoral to deny them this release. Um, thank you very much for listening to this lecture on James Rachel's The Morality of Euthanasia.